Well, hello there, everybody. Welcome to your morning coffee. Thank you so much for tuning in. So this is going to be a general energy reading for Wednesday, January 23rd, 2019. This is a general reading, all right? So please take what resonates with you and leave what doesn't. Um, uh, energies are fluid, so please understand that just because this message is coming through today and is dated, uh, for Wednesday, January 23rd. It doesn't mean it has to happen on this day, okay? This could be, this could happen at any time. This is literally just the messages that spirit has for us. That's for, these are just the things that spirit wants to talk with us about today, okay? So um, go ahead, if you haven't done so yet, uh, follow me on Instagram at divine underscore conversations. And also I am on Facebook now, uh, facebook.com slash divine conversations, 27, 11. Yes. It's very much just like my email address only minus the at gmail.com. Um, both of the links are in the description box below. Yeah. So uh, let's just get straight into it here. Alrighty, guys. Hi, spirit. Please make me a clear channel for the collective at this time. Please bring forward the best messages to serve the highest good of all involved. Please bring forward the best messages for today, Wednesday, January 23rd, 2019. All right, thank you so much, Spirit. All righty, kids, let's see what we've got today. Just gonna give this a few shuffles. Yesterday's message was pretty intense. So, let's see what's going on for today. Wednesday, January 23rd. We're almost, out. guys, can we just talk about the fact that January is almost over already? Like, wasn't it just New Year's, like, yesterday? <laughs> this is nuts. Time is really starting to fly. But you know what they say, time flies when you're having fun. <laughs> I don't know how, how fun things have been lately, but I don't know. You never know, right? Oh, don't mind me, guys. I'm being silly. It's early in the morning, and I'm slightly delusional. <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> I'm kidding. Okay. Let's see what we've got for today. Wednesday, January 23rd. Thank you so much, Spirit. Best messages to serve the highest good of all involved. The highest good. There we go. Oh, the tower. Really? Good God, people. What's happening? No. Okay. All right, we're good. Underneath the deck. Interesting. We have the Queen of Wands here. Okay. This is interesting um, because in seeing the tower, <clears throat> I am being reminded of the, the reading that I did live on Instagram last night, um, which was a follow-up for the Divine Masculine after her, the pretty rough reading we had for morning coffee yesterday. And so in that reading, I wanted to get some advice for the Divine Masculine in moving forward. Um, and I did mention that, you know, I could see some tower moments coming for some of the, in the Divine Masculine camp, mainly just because of the fact that there's still a lot of resistance there towards ascending and changing your point of view and seeing things differently and this, that, and whatever, what not whatever, and all that good stuff. So now that I'm seeing the tower here, I'm being reminded of that. Um, and then, lo and behold, we have the Queen of Wands underneath the deck here. 
which to me is a depiction of the divine feminine in the 3D form because of the fire, the spiritual aspect of wands, the passion, all that good stuff. Okay. So already I'm getting that divine feminine, <laughs> divine feminine, you're creating tower moments all over the place here. How dare you? <laughs> Oh man, I crack myself up. Let's see what else we've got here. I mean, first off the bat, on this pile of cards here, you have the Nine of Cups, which is starting you out in this row here. So that's a good thing. That's wish fulfillment, okay? Um, but for some of you, wow, this is actually really good. For some of you, for some of you, the Nine of Cups is overindulgence um, in substances, trying to trying to drown your sorrows, trying to self-medicate a little. Um, there is a self-re-identification uh, process going on here with the Page of Wands. This uh, The Page of Wands talks about authenticity to me, creativity, um, and, and self-discovery. Uh, but this is self-discovery in the form of who you truly are, you know, as a, on a spiritual level, on an energetic level, what you truly stand for and all that. And then you have the Knight of Cups here. This is quite beautiful. So, okay, Divine Feminine, yeah, you're creating some tower moments here. But I kind of want to say, because that's what Spirit just said, it sounded like um, you're doing it by default. It's not even like you're trying to do it just by being who you are sharing the messages that you share, living the life that you share, whatever. You are creating tower moments all around. Now, this could be a tower moment for you, Divine Feminine. Mm -hmm. But it doesn't feel bad. It feels like wish fulfillment. Honestly, I'm going to go ahead and say that for some of you, this tower moment could be somebody somebody coming into your life and offering you some love here. <coughs> and it's totally shocking to you. <laughs> That's really interesting. A soulmate or some a potential partner coming to, into your life and offering you love is a tower moment. Good God, what have we come to? <laughs> Ooh. Hmm. Okay, I mean, what I'm really getting here is that for some people, there is a realization, there is a realization of some person in their vicinity we'll say because I'm not even I'm I'm not even confident that you know you're actually a part of their life if you get if you get what I mean it's like this person is like in the vicinity so you know of each you know of each other you might have I mean this really absolutely could be someone from your past um, this could be like, you know, like I said, this could be your divine masculine. This could be your twin flame. This could just be someone that you were associated with in the past. I don't know, but someone's having a tower moment, a tower moment that is at least if you're not, if you're not realizing that somebody could be potentially the love of your life or someone is really, you're really into them or whatever, you have some pretty deep feelings for them. You want to make some moves or make an offer to them. This is a tower moment um, that is opening your heart, that is um, opening you up for more creative expression with the Knight of Cups here. Um, and regardless of whether this is your twin flame or not that's influencing, influencing this, like the Divine Feminine, you know, in the physical form, this is... Um, influenced by the rise of the divine feminine in general because that's what's happening right now that's really quite wonderful to be quite honest is this yeah that's it spirit saying yeah that's it Ooh, let there be light that's so much brighter look at that guys it's fantastic isn't it <laughs> um yeah, 
it's interesting because this tower moment really doesn't feel all that bad, but this energy is coming from the rise of the divine feminine here. Uh, they're beautiful. This might be a light tower moment. I'm not, I don't know. I just kind of just want to clarify and see what this tower moment is. So we go and do that. Let's see. All right. Clarification time. What is this tower moment? Because like I said, it doesn't feel bad. Like I don't feel this ominous thing. It's just, like I said, it could be a light tower moment. And it, it's interesting. It feels, it feels good because it's leading. And I guess this is why it would be a light tower moment because it's leading to greater self-expression, greater authenticity, wish fulfillment also. So it's like, yeah, it's a tower moment, but it's a tower moment that helps you realize that y you can be who you are. You can creatively express yourself. This also might be a breakthrough for some of you that might be going through like a dry spell creatively. You could have a breakthrough. Okay, because the page of wands also talks about creative expression. Um, you know, becoming passionate about something and taking steps towards like taking action on it, starting a new creative project. Uh, with the Nine of Cups here, I'm picking up that for some of you, it's what you've been through that's going to help your creative expression. Which is weird. I don't know why I got that from the Nine of Cups, but that's what came through. So, okay. Oh, maybe because you might have been drowning your sorrows trying to forget. Trying to drown it out. But in facing it is actually where you, where you do the healing. Because the more you push it away, the longer it's going to fester. And it's just going to create some shit that you don't want to have to deal with later. Okay? So deal with it now. Before it gets worse. That kind of energy. All right. One more shuffle. And then I want to see what this tower moment is. All righty, spirit. Okay. King of Swords is underneath the deck. But what is this tower moment? Ooh. Wow. Oh, <laughs> underneath the deck is the Ace of Wands. So yeah, this is a tower moment that's definitely going to create some sort of um, inspiration. This could be sexual in nature. It also could be creative, okay? Like we're seeing with the Page of Wands. Um, you have the Ten of Swords, the Ace of Cups, the Queen of Pentacles, and the Eight of Wands. All right. So first of all, the Ten of Swords is a completion. The end of a vicious, vicious cycle, says Spirit. All right? Um, and then you have the Queen of Pentacles, the Ace of Cups, and the Eight of Wands. So, I, I feel like somebody definitely wants to make some sort of offer. Hmm. Um, I'm getting heavy motherly energies. I tend to. I, I usually tend to from the Queen of Pentacles. I get strong mother type energies. For some of you, there is a conversation that is going to happen or that needs to happen when it comes to standing up to some sort of mother figure. And that comes from um, filling your own cup of self-love, okay? Okay having love for yourself, respecting yourself, honoring yourself, 
and standing up to any sort of narcissism, sociopathy, or excuse me, sociopathic tendencies, abusive tendencies. Now, this could also, this Queen of Pentacles could also be that counterpart that you want to communicate with. Um, it could be the Divine Feminine. I have been seeing the Queen of Pentacles as the Divine Feminine lately because it's the embodiment of her in the physical realm, okay? So that would be the physical representation of her. And there's an energy of wanting to make an offer to her offer some sort of cup uh, some sort of cup of love or it could just be having a conversation with her because you have a fuller cup and you respect yourself more love yourself more know what you are worth know what you deserve this that and the other and now you finally may want to make some sort of move communicate towards to her or at least just get closer to her. Migrate, I just heard. I'm getting some sort of energy of wanting to make some sort of offer to the Divine Feminine, a physical offer. This could be creatively. Maybe you might create some sort of artwork for her, maybe write her a, a song, paint a, paint, paint a picture, do something, I don't know, something, write her a poem. Well, gee, that sure is romantic. We are moving into Valentine's month. <laughs> All right. So now let's clarify this bottom row here. Nine of Cups, Page of Wands, Knight of Cups. Let's see what we got. Hmm. Okay, so far we have the Six of Swords underneath the deck. We have the Three of Pentacles and Justice in reverse here. All right. Uh, we have the Sun, <laughs> the Five of Pentacles. I'm sorry, the Five of Cups. Oh, and the Queen of Wands again. Oh. Uh... All right, well, the Three of Pentacles and Justice in reverse, both are in reverse, are on the Nine of Cups. And originally, one of the first things I saw when the Nine of Cups came out was drowning your sorrows. Mm. Um... Because there's, for some, there's a refusal towards self-mastery. You're blocking it out. You're not facing it. And it's creating an injustice. But it's not even like it's creating an injustice for anyone else other than yourself. You're just doing yourself an injustice by not working on yourself. And then I know it's not easy. <clears throat> I know there's going to be some things that you really don't want to have to face, but... It's until it's not until you face them that you'll be free from them. Self-medicating, I'm hearing. Now, with that said, on the Page of Wands and the Knight of Cups, we do have the Sun, the Five of Cups, and the Queen of Wands. And what I'm getting with this is, first of all, the Sun is the best card in the deck, okay? It is the most optimistic um, it, no matter what, it's often said that no matter what other icky stuff might be going on in the reading, when the sun is around, everything's going to be okay, probably work out better than you think it, than you might think in the moment. The sun also talks about illusion, not illusion, illumination, illuminating the illusion, okay? Um, and so... Like I said, whatever spiritual growth or ascension or tower moment someone is having, it's influenced by the Divine Feminine here. 
and someone it what i'm seeing with the sun and the five of cups and the queen of wands to be honest is that someone is seeing how they've missed out on something uh, the more the queen of wands moves forward and moves on with her life the more it's illuminated about how much this person may have lost or at least perceive that they have lost because I, I don't think all is lost here it's just that there is a lot of cleanup to do I mean the air definitely needs to be cleared with the six of swords but there are energies of moving forward but I feel like for some of you, you're, you're giving up and are choosing to stay wherever you are here and not, not to do the self-mastery work and not to, you know, bring justice into your life. I wish I had something more positive there. Because it felt positive in the beginning, but now it's like, it's kind of depressing. Hmm. I just, I mean, uh, the, I guess, the reason why this is depressing is because of this. The three of pentacles in reverse and justice in reverse. It's like... Just do the work already. And I mean, I guess this doesn't mean it's not ever going to happen. It's just... There's a blockage right now. There's a holdup. For some of you, this does mean... This is talking about an injustice in some sort of work situation. Oh, oh, well, there's a more positive spin. Injustice in a work situation, but with the Six of Swords, you most likely left. Or maybe you're on your way out. Like you could be, um, you could be finally starting to wrap your head around the fact that you don't want to fight against the grain anymore. You don't want to fight against this. I'm picking up that there is some sort of um, hierarchy or something like that within this this job situation, within, within this like team situation. And you're finally fed up with it. You're done fighting against it and you're deciding to move on. Or you've already decided to move on, like you've already left. And now some people around you, or at least that used to be around you, um, that you used to work with or whatnot, are seeing the error of their ways. With the sun, it's being illuminated for them, and they're really starting to realize what they lost in you. And, I mean, you could be a fire sign. I just, I'm feeling, I'm feeling strong divine feminine energies within that. Either you are an, I mean, either you identify as the divine feminine or the energies of the divine feminine influenced this move and absolutely was the right one. You were acting from a place of self-discovery, of um, understanding yourself, of honoring yourself, of being authentic authentic expression, expression from the heart. Okay, that's pretty good. Hmm. Yeah, I'm definitely getting an energy of there are people around you right now that are starting to see you for more of who you truly are. And that absolutely could be happening in your absence. 
and it's a contrast type of thing. It's like, okay, they saw how things were when you were around, but now that you're not around, um, it's almost like there isn't as much light. Um, things are as much are, are dimmer. Um, there's more darkness around. But it's funny because in the darkness, there's still illumination. Isn't that funny how that works? When the light was around, it's like they could see everything, yet they saw nothing at the same time. But now that the light is gone, they see less and yet more. It's weird, right? That's so weird. <laughs> Hmm. The Six of Swords energy, um, I really don't feel, what I'm getting from that is that even though, you know, the, the situation might have been rough and may not have ended well, you still went in peace in a way. Like, it might have been a, a tough situation, but you didn't, um, it wasn't a big uproar. It wasn't just a big knockdown, drag out fight. It was more of a situation where you just like, you or they or whomever just dropped their swords and left. Didn't say a word even. It's just like, bye Felicia, I'm done, bye. I don't even wanna have, a very Queen of Swords like, only not as maybe hot as, uh, I don't know, I guess you could say hostile as the Queen of Swords could be especially given this kind of situation. But yeah, Divine Feminine, you're definitely creating some sort of tower moment here, or you have created some sort of tower moment here. And I am seeing the divine energies of the Divine Feminine in both the Queen of Wands and the Queen of Pentacles. It's the spiritual aspect of you, the fiery aspect of you that I'm seeing in the Queen of Wands, and the physical, motherly, practical, compassionate, but tough love side of you that I'm seeing in the Queen of Pentacles. And it's that tough love, um, that no bullshit mentality that is very much like the Queen of Swords that is allowing you to stand up for yourself with the Eight of Wands. I'm sorry, with, yes, well, yeah, okay. With the Eight of Wands and the Ace of Cups. Okay, so there may have been some sort of communication maybe some sort of final words or the eight of wands is also could just be swift movement just quickly very similar to the chariot energy <laughs> i just thought of the title for the video divine feminines creating tower moments over here <laughs> <laughs> All right, I guess we can move into the oracle section now. Yeah, let's do that. So we're going to get into the animal spirit guides to kick us off with that. And then I want to move to, the, I want to close the reading with the light worker oracle this time. Okay. Best message, please, spirit. Ooh, mouse. Oh goodness, not mouse. I see mouse as very much like chicken lip. Oh no, that's rabbit. Huh, we'll see. Best message please, spirit. I do think I might wanna read mouse. No, 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 that's too many. <laughs> I'm sorry, spirit, I can't today. That's just too many. Best message, please. There we go. Ooh, tarantula. Yes. Underneath the deck, you have octopus. All right. Octopus talks about lack of healthy boundaries. Um, it can talk about oversharing. Um, you know, oversharing lack of healthy healthy boundaries which leads to pretty which leads to like well well intended but messy relationships um but what i'm getting here with octopus is narcissism 
That's literally what I heard when I looked at that card. Um, and it, I'm feeling a sense of someone just sticking their hands where they don't belong because they feel extremely privileged. Like saying or doing things, exactly, lack of healthy boundaries. Saying and doing things because they feel like they can't, just because they can. What do you mean? It's who I am, I can do that. Don't you know? No, actually, I don't know. Who are you again? I'm gonna need you to get out of here because no to your narcissism. That's what I'm getting with octopus, okay? So some of you have recently released yourself from a heavily narcissistic situation. And good on you if you have. Could that be some bullshit? <laughs> All right, but tarantula here. Which is fire, is more fire. I mean, we've got the Queen of Wands twice, okay? So fire all up in this bitch. <laughs> oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. Tarantula. At a crossroad, claiming life's purpose. The tarantula represents a moment when a great decision must be made. It involves prioritizing your life's deeper purpose or dharma. A habit or routine from the past is sidetracking you from your dream, yet a voice inside keeps begging you to refocus your attention. In order to find true happiness, you must choose Dharma. Until you do, satisfaction will be fleeting. The tarantula hovers, patient and calm, like an old friend that knows your inner soul. It already knows you'll choose wisely. When in balance, tarantula follows its intuition. When out of balance, tarantula hesitates and over-intellectualizes. To bring into balance, one must one can do some daily journaling. Okay. <clears throat> Greater authenticity is key here, kids. And I say that all the time, but it's true. So I'm gonna keep saying it. <laughs> all right, so I'm gonna close the reading now with the, the uh, Lightworker Oracle here. All right. Final message, best message, please spirit. Closing message for today's reading. There it is. Ooh, wow. Ooh, that's heavy. That is heavy. Dark night of the soul. Ouch. Ooh. In all of the time that I've been, I've been working with this deck for about a year now. And I don't think this card has ever come out. Yo, Divine Feminine be creating some, be, be kicking up some shit, y'all. Be creating dark nights of the soul and shit over here. Good Lord. You are ready for a more real and radiant relationship with the Divine. Your perceived ideas and safe limiting beliefs may be sacrificed in order for this to happen. To the divine, there are only, these are only the clothing of your spirit. They are imp Im impediments to the absolute intimacy the divine seeks with you. You might feel vulnerable and uncertain as the divine goes about stripping away these barriers. This is when you enter the dark night of the soul. You understand there is nothing to rely upon but the divine and you will find it difficult to trust at times. This night will end, however, and the sweetness of the divine dawning in your heart shall render all worthwhile. But for now, you are meant to feel exactly as you feel. You are not doing something wrong. You are moving closer to the divine. Wow. Even though you are already on a spiritual path this lifetime, you can go deeper. Sometimes people know this and yet are afraid. Familiar with emotional drama, they are hesitant to let go of what they know, even if this is emotional suffering and mental anguish. That fear presents them from being willing to trust in the loving hand reached out to them, reaching out to them. It might seem silly, yet letting go of fear to take hold of the hand of love can be extraordinarily difficult. If you don't trust that love will hold you, 
Letting go can seem like allowing yourself to fall into an abyss. A feeling of madness may plague you as you wonder if you are sane to leave a known world behind you and enter into the darkness of your own doubt and fear. You sense that the old self and the familiar ways will not survive this dark night. Even if you know in your heart that this sort of spiritual death is an opening to new life, it can be profoundly, confront uh, yeah, profoundly confronting. The only way to end the dark night is to go through it to endure it and to know that although you will not understand <clears throat> how it could be possible, it will transform itself into the sweetest grace. In time, you shall be on your knees, not in a despairing prayer, dearest child of love, but in gratitude, peace, and devotion. Though it begins as a challenge, the dark night of the soul will become a saving grace. Love knows you are ready. No matter what you may think at this moment of struggle, you are ready to take this spiritual test and emerge more in love with the divine than ever. Remember, this is an advanced initiation and therefore challenging at a profound spiritual level. Therefore, get some support. Even though you walk the path alone, another can help bear witness to your process and remind you that you are on a noble path of empowerment, love, and truth. Also, although you may feel your guidance has abandoned you, in truth, they are with you ever more closely, whispering words of encouragement, hope, and love. Look for the love within and let it guide you through the dark night. It will lead you faithfully and in perfect divine timing into the light of your sweetest morning. And with that, the sun is coming up. <laughs> Alrighty, guys. So there you have it. Thank you so much for tuning in. I will be doing happy hour tonight. So join me, if you will. Tonight, 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, I'll be doing an energy check-in for the collective. And then the floor will be open for single question readings at a discounted price, 20, 20 bucks. Uh, single question readings during happy hour are discounted to $20, yeah? But with that, I hope you all have a great day and I will see you later. Yeah. Take care. Bye.